All right. Uh, wow, that's really loud. Uh, we're going to be talking a bit about JavaScript speech recognition and throw out some other HTML5 stuff. Uh, this project is been a lot of fun to work on. It's kind of a, a passion of mine. But I will tell you, this particular presentation may be filled with a lot of epic fail. Uh, first off, may I see you over here on the right hand side, eager away trying to get my laptop to actually display. Uh, so this isn't even my laptop. This is Tommy's. And I've got to thank him for allowing me to use it. But anyway, let's get on. So this is all my particulars. It'll be in the slide. I'm going to pick it up later. But the key thing is, I'm a little bit nutty about speech recognition. I originally started working with it around the year 2000 when we had big honking servers that you needed to recognize speech. And now we all have devices in our pockets that can do the exact same thing, and better than they could like 12, 13 years ago. So now we're just kind of making a joke about uh, the Canadian accent. Now, I'm actually from the east coast of Canada, where we have a completely different accent. And this kind of helps to illustrate why I'm interested in speech track. This is a conversation between two kid writers. First guy says, gee. Second guy says, now nah, you. Third, this first guy comes back, now it's pretty, right? So, <laughs> does anybody have any clue what's going on there? Yeah, okay, so, some folks may have like vague understandings of what's going on, and if you hang out with me tonight after a few more beers and one of my friends from Cape Breton comes up from San Francisco, you will hear this in action. But this is bait looks. This is basically what it ends up being. Did you eat? No. Did you? No, it's too early to eat, buddy. <laughs> so in Cape Breton, we like to take the uh, English alphabet and compress it down into 10 letters, because all that other stuff is just as crazy. It doesn't mean it. It's crazy. Anyway. So what is speech recognition? Well, oh, wow. That says uh, it's the process of translating the spoken word into text. That's basically what's going on. Uh, the process of doing this includes a number of steps. First and foremost is you have to record and digitize the audio data. Then you split up things into phonemes. Now, the interesting thing about the English language, it has somewhere between 40 to 44 phonemes, depending on who you talk to. Uh, different researchers have different ideas. And a phoneme is that small, discrete sound that the English language would be split up into. Now, when you take a look at something like Spanish, they only have on the order of 20 to 25. So it's actually easier to do speech recognition on Spanish than it is on English. I thought that's interesting. Anyway, so you apply those forms to your recognition model, whether it be English, French, Spanish, German, Swahili, whatever. Then you analyze that result against the grammar. And so that's where we're trying to figure out which is the, the best result. So when you get a speech recognition result back, you're going to get a list of things. And they're, they're rated by confidence. So if you say hello to a computer, the first result is probably going to be hello, and you'll recognize that with a high level of confidence. The second result may be how low. Yes, the computer also likes Miranda. Anyway, basically all of this stuff is rocket science. There is a lot of crazy math behind speech recognition. And the greatest thing is, you don't even have to touch it anymore. It's wonderful. You don't need to know about hidden Markov models and any of that fun stuff. So anyway. How do we add speech recognition to our web applications or our you know, mobile hybrid applications? Well, there is a W3C speech API specification. It's not official yet, but it's pretty much all the way there. Uh, the greatest thing about it is that uh, Google uh, are the one and only contributors to it. Why do I say the greatest thing? Because it's a consistent API that makes sense. It hasn't been developed by a committee. It's, it actually makes sense. I like it. Thank you, Google. Good job. Uh, the only bad thing about it is right now it's only available for Chrome on your desktop. So it's not in Chrome on Android. It's not available on iOS or Blackberry or anything like that. But hey, that's OK, because this is Phone Gap. Plug in all the things. You write plugins for this new functionality. So that is what I'm doing. All right. So the, specific, yeah, the specification looks something like this. Uh, again, see how simple that is? Three methods. Start, stop, and abort. Start recognition, stop recognition, abort in the middle. That, like, that's all you need. You don't need a lot of other crazy stuff. But uh, you can specify the language, whether it's continuous speech recognition, which is like you know, kind of your dictation type application, or if you want specific commands, you set it to false. It's very easy to understand. Uh, then there's a lot of additional methods that uh, are fired, the event methods are fired. So, 
kind of looks a little redundant. We have audio start, sound start, and speech start. But those are three different things. Audio start is as soon as it starts uh, recording. Sound start is when it starts detecting some kind of sound. And speech start is when, oh, actually, that's not just background noise, that's actually somebody talking. So you probably won't have to worry about those three different events, but they're there for you if you ever want to do stuff like that. Uh, perhaps you're working for, I don't know, some sort of government agency that wants to record everything that's going on, and <laughs> maybe you want to ignore on sound start, but you'll want to do something when on speech start happens. I don't know, whatever. But what we'll be mostly dealing with today is what comes in on the on result of that handler. All right. So let's actually recognize some speech. And fingers crossed. Uh, this may or may not work. I don't know. I've never tried to have time to talk about it. Let's give it a shot. Uh, as you can see, the code is really simple. You just create a new uh, speech recognition engine. Uh, if you're doing this in Chrome right now, the speech recognition is precious with WebKit. Uh, but eventually, when it becomes a specification, that will go away. Um, guys, just get rid of the vendor prefixes. They don't help anybody. Just do away with them. Uh, so you handle your uh, results in the on-result event handler, just do a little check, make sure you actually got something back, and then we're going to take that and just put it back into the DOM. We're going to replace what's there, and again, let's hope that this works. Hello world! Oh, yeah, that's a good point. First time I did it, I'm talking to you, right? All right. <laughs> Hello world! The rest of this may go okay. <laughs> no, that's kind of All right. So again, that's pretty cool. You know, if you like taking dictation for a living, that is a much more impressive picture where you can see the entire thing. Uh, it's like a uh, 1960s slash 70s secretary who's typing away. The amazing thing is, my dad still dictates decisions onto cassette and hands them to his secretary to type out. I'm like. <laughs> And this is a guy who decides court cases in Canada that have to do with technology on occasion. So <laughs> he does love the book fix, I tell you. All right. So what if we want to do something a little more exciting with the results? Well, let's try something like this. It's a little bit less trivial. Uh, let's try to play some music. Again, this may or may not work. Jazz. Yeah. All right, I wasn't 100% sure that was going to work, but uh, I'm going to give another shot here. Jazz. So you know what's going to happen. I'm going to move on like two or three slides later, and all of a sudden there's jazz in the background. All right, anyway. Sorry? Sound on Johnny. Sorry? Oh my god, it's on mute. <laughs> Jobs 
What is Steve Jobs' middle name? Great. Cool. <laughs> so, what's going on here is uh, I'm doing an XA code request to Wolfram Alpha in order to get the data back. And Wolfram Alpha is a great answer engine. Uh, I think even Siri uses it when it like, kind of falls out of everything else that it has programmed. They'll go to break to Wolfram Alpha for the answer. Uh, now, the other confession that I have to make. Um, this is a hard coded response because I'm on Tommy's system. Because <laughs> uh, we wouldn't be able to do a cross uh, origin request right now, but you know, it works, so we're going to do it. All right, well, wait a minute. Why am I using my eyes like a sucker to read these responses? Why do we input this stuff using speech synthesis? So, this is part of the same API spec, the web speech API. Again, ridiculously simple. Um, basically, you have your, your speech. And that, anything you send into it there, uh, the utterance will be played out. And of course, you can cancel that, you can pause it, and then resume playing it back later. Uh, and get voices. Basically, you're going to get a list of all the different voices on the system and what languages they support, which you know, can be quite useful. Uh, again, uh, we have the, the utterance, which is where you specify uh, the text that you want played out, the language that you want it played in. Uh, the voice you arrives when you can change between possibly a male or a female voice if you have like, two different English CTS engines in there, and you control the volume, rate, and pitch. So the speed that is played back and you know, how much of a mouse it sounds like. And then finally, not unlike the speech recognition engine, you have all of these event methods that you can listen to to figure out you know, what things are going on. So like it's pulled out all together, something like this. Who won the Stanley Cup this year? Second time's a charm, right? That's what we're learning today. Who won the Stanley Cup this year? Chicago Blackhawks. Right. <laughs> you guys just got trolled! Search. <laughs> <laughs> They're still bitter, what, three years later? I am really sorry, guys. So, all of this stuff, uh, I've been working on it. It's working right now for Android. I, uh, these are the plugin repos. I'll be pushing the Android version there soon. I'm working on the iOS side of things. Now, Android is so much easier to develop this for because there is already built in speech recognition and text to speech. So I'm just exposing the API. Uh, when it comes to the iOS side of things, I've been going to like third party vendors of SpeechRack and TTS in order to, to do this sort of stuff. And uh, I, I plan on having an interface so that other people can come in and add their speech recognitions to this, and it's all going to be controlled by the voice URI, so you'll be able to easily switch it. So what this is going to enable you to do is build your web application, add speech recognition into it, and then take that to iOS and Android and still have that functionality work. So that is the plan. And that's it for me. If you got any questions, I'll be around. <laughs>